Salam alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, all you see Dina Sharfiri. In this video, we are going to see how you can use the derived state of from the Jetpack Compose side effect API. Let's get started. So here, let me get through this code. I'm having an int list that's simply display an int list in here in this list. And we do have a button in here in which if you are in the bottom, if you click on it, it will go to the top. That's it. Okay, in order to do that, we have a lazy column here with a scrolling state. We need that scrolling state in order to control it. Why? Because when you click on the floating action button, it will simply uh, animate scroll to. Okay, we are using the animate, so it shows an animation going on here. So if you do that, it will go up and you are using just a simple image and you are using this greeting scope in order to latch this one since this is a semantic function. Okay, with simple text, simple padding, simple stuff of Jetpack Compose. Now, what we need to do, there's one feature we didn't implement yet, is that we don't need to show this one when we are in the top. When we start scrolling like that, we need to show it. Otherwise, we don't have to show it. So by default, it won't be shown. So we need to create something around this, okay? So simply, we'll have something called is button shown. It will be false, for example. And here we need to show it. Uh, we can do animated visibility. Yeah, why not? And here it's button shown. And you are going to put this in. So by default, it is false. And whenever we update, whenever we update, the thing we are going to use. And here, simply the code will be the following. Scroll state. From the state, we can get the first visible item index. So it is zero in this case. And now it is 11 index because we are starting from zero. So this will represent that. We need to see if it is bigger than zero. If it is bigger than zero, we need to show it. Otherwise, we don't need to show it. So let's run this behavior. I think it will work fine. So yeah, the issue will be in this alignment. Yeah. Exactly, let's scroll. It is shown as you can see, and it will it won't be shown in zero. So the issue here is only the place. So yeah, let's move this modifier into here. And that would work, I think, perfectly fine. Like this is just aesthetic part. It is there. It's not the perfect animation, but let's use it. Now the issue is the following. Since this scroll state, this scroll state first visible will be updated with every movement. So here it will be updated once, another time, another time, another time, another time. But the result of this one will be always true, 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 true. Okay, and true, and here we are true. So we are doing basically useless recompositions because if this change, like if this change, this is changing, so this will be changed. So everyone reading from this this button need to recompose so that's the issue as here as you can see frequently changing state should not be directly read in composable function and here is the thing what we need to do is we need to use some kind of thing that allow us that when something is changing frequently the result of that evaluation need to be changed only when it is changed i don't know if you get it so basically this will be one two three and four so it always be emitted one two three and four but the result of this evaluation will be true 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 we need to recompose only when this true goes to for example force or this force goes to true only that part here we use that kind of called derived state of you can wrap it with derived state of it will be like that okay so this will be uh, the way to use it so we need to derive state from this and we need to remember it that's important so it will be part of the composition. And now here we need to yeah, use the value of it. You may say it's just the same, but under the hood, a lot of composition is, is not happening. So here it is working fine, as you can see, and now it's working fine. How can we check this? We need to check if this is getting recomposed. So I think I'm going to use the following. Yeah, let me just return that in here. Okay, I'm not going to use any animation just let's say for demonstration and from this icon i can do the following if my is button shown okay i'm going to do the following that's pretty it and within here what i need to do simply i will need to print the following yeah let me do two stuff i need to log in here i need to log the following int list okay is button shown this is the value let's call it tag and here we need to do also the following action button action button is show and we need also let me check also this one is not shown so let's run the app and see so here in the lock cards 
again we see endless derived states not calculated action button is not shown okay what we know here is that the following is not shown now if i scroll a little bit we are going to see the following derived state is true the button is shown it means you are showing this one now if you scroll more you won't see anything because it's not changing derived state is not changing now if i go up it will change to false as it's not shown so we are not recomposing unless we need it if we delete that if we delete that and return it like the following now this one we don't need value here yeah let's run it you will see the difference while compose will skip some recompositions of course it's smart to do that that's why we use it but you will see the difference sorry look at in here false not shown now if i start scrolling you will see that the logout is full right now. With every change, it is it is updated, and that's the issue. Sometimes it skips some recomposition. It's not as accurately as here, but it is shown. As you can see, it's not shown right now. But if we change it one more time, change it, it will be a problem. Now, this is basically the uh, implementation or the uh, rationale behind this derived state. So the official definition of this derived state of is the following. So it creates state object. Now there is a great uh, definition. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is basically the rationale behind it. But simply, when your state is changing well, a lot, we're changing more than you want to update the UI, use it. Here, we want to update the UI only if this evaluation goes true false. But this is changing too much. Okay, it's changing upon each like scroll. So, this is the valid use case of this derived state of that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching this video to the end don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos Assalamualaikum.